Does America have a foreign policy right now? Um, sure, we do. Uh, it, it's, uh, I mean, you have, first of all, the foreign policy establishment, uh, which absolutely maintains a level of U.S. presence and engagement around the world and pushing against, and, and it's pretty consensus between the Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. And then pushing against it, <clears throat> you have Trump, who is more unilateral, more transactional, less oriented towards right. values, um, and is starting to have a real impact um, on the way other countries think about America's durability and presence in these various uh, places. My grandfather was different than Mr. Trump's father, but they were both isolationists. And Mr. Trump, the president, picked that up from his father. Characterize the isolationism of this president with that phrase that we know from our childhoods. I've never liked the phrase isolationism uh, when it comes to Trump because it's not as if he doesn't want to use American pressure to ensure better engagement around the world. Oh, come on, he wants our troops out right now. Troops look, out. Look at what's happened in the last he, five days. He does want troops out. That does, but but the, the way he looks at trade engagement, for example, with the Chinese or with the Europeans and the rest, it, and, and, and the way he's more than happy to have American troops, additional troops, sent to Saudi Arabia when they pay for it. That's not an isolationist stance. It's, a, it's an enormously transactional and short-term non-strategic stance. And it's one that undermines American allies because it views them as being able to shut them on and turn them off at a moment's notice right. at his will. That, that's kind of where he is. But Ian, what does it mean that he, that therefore he wants a deal, a <clears throat> transactional deal with China? Or is the bigger picture here that it's also giving an overture to, to Vladimir Putin in the Middle East? Look, clearly everything that Trump does in foreign policy is music to Putin's ears because it undermines American long-term strength, durability of alliances, and that's precisely what Trump is interested in, Putin is interested in. He wants to see space for more chaos within the U.S., more divisions, more divisions inside Europe, within the transatlantic relationship, and the Middle East as a whole. In China, Trump has focused almost monomaniacally on the trade deficit in particular um, and a little bit on things like intellectual property theft. Um, the problem with the China relationship is that President Xi Jinping, number one, no longer believes that he can actually do a deal, that he can trust Trump to follow through. He feels like he's put political capital on the line and hasn't paid off for him. And number two, that Trump has much less leverage now that elections are getting closer and the economy is getting softer. So as a consequence, China's offering essentially nothing going forward with the U.S. And we're at best status quo until the elections. At worst, and I expect it's going to be worse than this, the relationship is going to deteriorate significantly.